Hi, this is Ken Jureski. We're, uh, we're talking pictures today, just with me. I'm all by myself. I'm going to go through a take I made last, uh, last week. Uh, there were, um, I shot about 2,068 images over a seven-day period. I went to uh, Spain and Morocco, and the idea was to shoot, uh, shoot with one camera, one lens, just to travel as light as possible. And so I'll edit that take now. Like I said, we had started with uh, 2,068 frames. Uh, the selects are about 2,005 frames, so 10% of the entire take. And um, we're going to go through the idea is to edit the images and to tone the selects uh, to produce uh, a little magazine I, I like to do called Curious Magazine. So we'll see how this, uh, how this goes. So we're in Photo Mechanic and these are the selects. This doesn't have anything to do with it. This is in the airport in Amsterdam. Still doesn't have anything to do with it. They're nice pictures, but they don't don't have anything to do with what we're doing. What you do with uh, street photography. So street photography is like journalism without a story. So you're telling these little one picture stories. When you're stringing a bunch of these images together in a magazine, you're creating a narrative. Um, that's the idea anyways. That's how I put my street photography into context. And I was trained as a journalist, so it's really hard for me just to have single images just standing by themselves with no story behind them. So I'm just going through Photo Mechanic. I, this doesn't have anything to do with street. This kind of works. I like this horse picture, so this is the first one I'll tone. When I'm toning, the first thing I do is is kind of get my my histogram under control, just like that. I use this tool here. I'm not sure what this tool is called, but then I bring my overall exposure back up. To where it's about right. Just my contrast. And now I'm going to adjust the color. I'm going to use this little little piece of human hand here to, to go by and kind of keep it as realistic as I can. So to me that's kind of how the tone should look. So I try to, I, I kind of pride myself on shooting full frame in camera type of thing. This image isn't as sharp as it should be. We'll tone it, see what happens. I use the history brush here on screen to uh, basically use that to dodge. So I'm just bringing up these highlights right here. Those horses were pretty dark. Okay, so I am pretty good with that. I'll go in here and you can see I have my presets, a blurb, double trek, and the trade. So you gotta crop this for uh, reproduction because it's not going to fit on the page otherwise. So the only thing I'm looking at here is am I still kind of being true to the image and where's this gutter going to go? And I think the gutter is good there. I'm good with this line up here. Okay, I'll add a little grain. I add grain to everything. It's my grainy little secret.
So just to go full screen here, you can see that's not the sharpest picture in the world. We'll go back to this point here. Then I'll sharpen for output. And how I sharpen for output in uh, Blurb is I do half tones, I do glossy, and I do 140 lines at 100%. So I really under sharpen is what that means. That's as sharp as she's going to get. And we save. I'll save these in JPEGs at a nine. Okay, this image, I'm not so sure about this image. So we have 205 selects. We need about 60 to make an 80 page magazine. So I'll do that same workflow. Kind of try to get my histogram. It's clipped on both sides. These colors are so vibrant shadows are dark not a whole lot you can do about that I'll add my I just use this to create my quick way to dodge and burn and in the raw okay that's about right. Take those highlights down. Bring my contrast up. It's about where that needs to be. So this guy's it's completely pink light there. So I'm just going to mess with it. There's not any correct color for this. I think that's about as close as you're going to get. Photoshop's working slow today because of QuickTime. I'm recording on QuickTime. So I'm just going to bring up the highlights on this guy's face a little tiny bit. And that's kind of where the light is hitting him anyways. And that's all that he needs. There's some, there's some sparkly kind of uh, hot spots in this, but it doesn't bother me overly much. Like I said, I usually try not to crop, but the page is only going to fit what the page is going to fit. I don't know if these first two images are going to make the book. This is just my editing process before I even get to the layout. The layout has to be the narrative, has to create that narrative, uh, that short story. And it's a personal story. It's not anybody else's story. It's just, you know, the street photographer's story. So it toned up pretty nice. You can see the difference of that sharpening is not a huge amount. The grain I put in there is just enough to let that give that sharpening something to grab hold of. That's the way I think about it. I also add a little contrast with the grain. This one, you know, I'm not even sure about this one. This is the editing process. This is when things get wanky. Ideally, you want another person looking at your stuff when you're editing. 
but since we're all kind of one person bands these days you don't always get that opportunity kind of have to be responsible for every aspect of your own work so that's starting to come together as far as color tone I really like the tone of this now I'd like it to be a little more green it's got that nice shop shop window type of feel to it So that is, I think, about right. I don't do anything with vibrance or saturation usually. I usually keep it pretty straightforward. Um, as far as dodging and burning, I don't think there's much to do to this image. Um, I wasn't as didn't concentrate as much as I should have when I made this image but those eyeballs up here on the edge of the frame are kind of important if I look at where my gutter is going to be so this is designed as a double truck that looks good yeah I cropped it wrong I left a little white in there that did it the trick okay good so we got that need those eyeballs in there it's a the little things I should have given myself more room when I shot the frame Yeah, I could set up actions and do all this like automatically. But I like to watch exactly where I'm at in the entire process. So that's a pretty nice frame. It might actually be black and white, but I like the color so much that I'm just going to keep it as a color image. This one's kind of a cliche. I don't know about it. I guess it is a black and white image for sure. That's one thing we don't have to worry about. It's it's kind of such a simple image. It's just nothing much to it. I'm not sure that I'm over impre overly impressed with this. So you can see that I'm doing, as far as the editing process goes, 90% of my, of my work in Adobe Camera Raw. Once it gets into Photoshop proper, there's not a whole lot to do. So when I'm sh converting black and white with this Silver FX Pro, which is a Nick product or I don't know if Nick still I don't know who runs it now I start on green and so that's usually green is the most drastic filter I'm going to use and the strength is at a hundred percent and then I slide my color bar and just see where that's going to go so I want I want that kind of uh, I don't want a full shadow I want that tone coming through those shadows so that looks like that's the place to be then I'll check my strength at that point and see okay that's so it's like a half that strength I'll add some grain and here I'm not even really too particular on the grain or that vignette 
it's just it's it's uh it's not like rocket science it's photography and it shouldn't be perfect if it's perfect then you're probably doing something wrong so that's how that looks I'm not sure we'll see we'll save it as a possible so you know I know this is boring but I also know that most of you like me are probably staying inside this week this is like so this is a little story so I got in there got into town and this is in Madrid and so these kind of famous street artists are doing this piece and you just see people reacting to the piece as they're painting it and I'm not sure it's uh, deface I think they're out of Scotland I'm not sure there they are there so I don't want to tell the whole story the making of this piece but I do really like this frame and I can probably you know because the pages in my little magazine are valuable I don't want to fill them up with stuff that isn't entertaining to people isn't uh, doesn't add to the overall story of what I'm trying to do let's just check the skin tone so that skin tone a little gray which is where it should be for that time of day pop a little more contrast just a little bit more so it's nice it's a street moment but it's also kind of a nice environmental portrait of these guys of these artists and it'll make a nice double truck the thing with the double truck so say the gutters right about here you've got a picture on either side of that gutter and together it makes up one really good picture but each page kinda kinda stands on its own and I think that's kinda the key to a good double truck each there should be a reason for each side of the gutter to exist and not just because you want more ink so I could kinda like tone this guy down he's our fifth face but I like that blown out highlight it seems very natural to me and so when I move this down so this is how it's going to be on the page in the magazine I want the top of that barber pole and I want the bottom of this guy's feet and that's really all the thing I, things I have to worry about as far as this um, cropping goes and that'll make a nice double truck that's like the first double truck I'm completely 100% happy with so far in this process my phone's been buzzing so let's see how that looks nice right so the reason I'm doing this it's gonna be a long video 
but this is how uh, I learned. I learned actually in the dark room this way, uh, watching somebody else edit their film and then go to the printer, go to the enlarger and make a print. And so you just sit there and you're, and you're, uh, you're talking as you're learning. So this is their art. And I like this idea that it's kind of messed up, kind of hidden. I didn't want to just shoot it straight. I wanted it to be a little funky. Get my color into line there. It's a little pink. And contrast, need some contrast for sure. That feels about right. And that makes sense from a narrative point of view to go from the portraits of the two artists to looking at their their piece on the on the wall there's nothing to be done to this just crop it properly right there So that'll make, in, in, in relation with, with when you have the double truck of the two artists and then you have this in the following double truck, that's four nice pages and that's a little bit of a, a narrative happening there. So we got four out of 80 pages done for sure. We don't know if these other shots that I've already toned will even make it to the magazine. I mean, I like the idea of the mannequin shot uh, against this shot of the street art. So these, these kind of shots here, this is kind of nice. I think this is it. But this isn't a double truck. Okay, there's no way this is a double truck. But that doesn't mean there's there isn't a place for it in the magazine. I mean, you got two. I have two elements to work with. I have the double truck and I have the full page. So this is more of a full page. You can see when I shot this, I had this couple over here, but. It wasn't really, it's not really strong enough to balance out the double truck. And I knew this little, this little shoot in the, in between the, the fence and the pole, that was where people would walk. So that's what I'm doing with this shot. I'm just, uh, I'm just waiting for someone to come through there and kind of complete my composition. I'm not worried about this, these other elements here as far as going dark and all that because I'm going to, uh, I'm go going to crop this into a single page. I think that's about where we need to be. Her eyes are just a little bit dark, so I'm going to just open those up a little tiny bit. This is exactly what you do if you were in the dark room making a black and white print. You do that same thing to those eyes. You would either dodge it beforehand or use some potassium ferrocyanide afterwards. 
So this is pretty, this crop is pretty natural. You got this, this street art here making this natural arc. So that's your, that's your composition right there. So that's how it's a good single, single page. So that makes sense. That's nice. That's strong. Yeah, that works. Will it end up in the magazine? We don't know. I mean, it's got to have something strong on the other on the other on the other page uh, facing it to make it work. Like this is probably, I'm trying to work with this guy over here. He's not, there's just nothing there. And right after I found this, I found another kind of shoot where people were naturally walking through, you know, to avoid the, the obstacles in the, in, in the sidewalk. So you kind of got that, you got the nice background, um, but there's no there's no element on this side of the page. So this is probably, whoops. And so these are basically the same image. And so which one do I like better is a question. I think I like this one better. I suppose I could get artistic and use like both of them facing each other that might be interesting as far as a layout is concerned yeah she's a little soft okay so that makes it easy for me if I screwed up technically I don't try to save it it's a little soft. It's not going to work. Now these are both sharp. So let's see. It almost makes a double truck, but it's not quite there yet. Just needed a stronger element. And I would have continued to work this seam, but like right after this, a big white truck pulled up here and ruined the whole flow of traffic and ruined any chance of of me getting um, getting a second element in my frame seems a little contrasty. I'm not going to, I'm going to let this stay hot. I'm not going to try to put that, get that under control. I'm just going to leave it as it was. I could have brought down the highlights a little bit. So same type of deal open up her eye a little bit, open up her cheek a little bit. This one looks lovely, but it just, I'm going to burn her forehead down just a little bit. Catching a lot of light there. Okay. I think we're good. Her hands are a little hot. I think that's about right. So we'll see we'll see where that crop puts us.
See, you know, that's, that looks like a good full page. I don't know if it'll pair with the other one we just did, but it's a start. The idea, you know, I'm putting all these in the same folder. So when I get through these 205 images, hopefully I'll have like maybe 80 out of those that actually end up getting toned. And so then I can put together the narrative from there. You know, you're thinking, you're thinking about what comes together and what works as you're doing this, but you don't know until you start laying out the magazine. This is a tough one. So this one's going to take some work. I hate shooting pictures through cafe windows because it always seems kind of creepy. But when there's a picture to be made, it needs to be done, right? So I tried to get my highlights under control and my shadows. And then I'll just brighten up this spot here where all the action's taking place. <sighs> Whoops. That's what I needed to do. I pulled my contrast down instead of my highlights. So these three guys here are about where they need to be. Maybe there. And these guys over here are not where they need to be. But I'm not sure... I think we'll have to do that in Photoshop. So the color is going to be important in this one. Can't be too warm. It's just my gut feeling. I think it needs a little more brightness. Okay, we'll see where that puts us. So this is the only guy that's basically already where he needs to be. I guess I can help him out a little bit. This is a, I don't know. This guy definitely needs some to emerge from the shadows there. So I use this history brush brush on screen and you can see I got it at 6%. So I'm taking it really easy. Okay. So I don't really have this guy's face here. But I have this hot spot on the side of his head and his neck here. So I'll go ahead and bring that up when your instincts tell you to like burn it down because it's already type of hot, type, kind of hot. And I'll hit his face a little bit there, but not a whole lot. I will bring this shirt down. The shirt is the hottest thing besides the lights here and there in the whole frame. 
that shirt has to come down because it's it's taken over okay so we got two other faces hiding in here and it's important that they can be seen but the trick is to just bring out the highlights that are already there not bring up the whole face this guy's like he spots me through the window he's got his tongue out of his mouth so that is enough there so that the viewer realizes there's a guy there and sees there's a little bit of a story happening there. This one's harder because of the reflections. But we don't want to get too obvious on the whole thing. We want to let the viewer's eye discover these things. He felt a little, a little too hot there. Okay. So now it's a little more balanced. This black hole bugs me here. So I'm just bringing up that dark black hole there. There's another one right here. Okay, so let's see where we're going to put our gutter on this one. Yeah, that's right where it belongs. So we got this sweeping curve down here. So we bring that up to the top. Add our grain. I think this is a color image. It'd be easy to make it a black and white image. I just have the feeling it's a color image. Okay, that's not bad. I might wake up in the middle of the night and retone it just because I can't sleep, but that'll do for now. So I'm going to take a break. I'll come back and show you some more stuff in part two. Thanks.